Well, hey there, how are you doing today? It's Simeon, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I wanted to talk to you today about this uh, wonderful new book I've been reading. It's called It Never Happened by David D. Shindeli, uh, retired captain from the US Air Force. Shindeli uh, was a launch control officer at Minot Air Force Base in uh, 19, middle 1960s. In this new book, he talks about an event that happened to him in 1966 where there were some UFOs seen over the area one evening and the next morning he goes in to do his job, which, you know, a very serious, uh, critical job, if you'd call it that, to uh, be responsible for launching nuclear-tipped missiles uh, if such a thing were required. And he went in one morning after these UFOs had been sighted around uh, uh, Mohal, I believe, this uh, little town near where his particular uh, launch control facility was located. And he found that all 10 missiles that he was responsible for were offline. He said that this was something that was unheard of. And uh, normally you might have one missile offline in this particular wing uh, SAC wing at Minot was very proud of the fact that they had such a high uh, percentage of missile uptime. Uh, but he went in one morning, they weren't working, and as the day progressed, he found out that uh, a large glowing disc had been seen over that particular launch facility. It had uh, been behind the base and moved around towards the front gate, and then all the missiles went offline. Now, what makes it more interesting is he was later told that day, or I believe the next morning, never to mention it again. The uh, superior officer said, as, you're, as far as you're concerned, it never happened. And this is what the book's about. Uh, Shindeli was really shocked by this and something that he actually, uh, it's an order that he obeyed for the next uh, 30 years. He didn't tell anyone about it, not even his own wife. and. You can really sense his anguish and uh, discomfort and uh, just uh, the sheer impossibility of the situation because normally at a nuclear launch facility, a missile facility, everything is constantly evaluated, reviewed. There's briefings that are debriefings that you're tested all the time for your mental and physical fitness. Nothing happens at one of these you know, strategic air command Air Force nuclear missile facilities um, unless it's reviewed and evaluated and discussed. And in this case, he's told that never to mention it again. And he, it was so, the command was so severe that he was told not even to discuss it with other people at his launch control facility, the people that he worked around, to such a degree that when technicians arrived later that day or the next day to get the missiles back up online, uh, he couldn't even tell them what had happened. That's how severe the secrecy was. So Shindeli concludes from all this that the Air Force has been involved in a cover-up of the UFO phenomena, and that's what the rest of the book goes into, starting with Roswell and various types of investigations that the Air Force claimed they were doing into the phenomena, starting with you know Project Sign and Grudge, and later known as Project Blue Book, uh, these investigations found evidence for something that's unexplainable according to our current levels of scientific knowledge, and yet it, they were used as a debunking effort to basically get the public to be less interested in the topic. Basically, you can see that the U.S. military was concerned that they didn't have control of United States airspace, and this isn't something that they want to admit to anyone. Um, but the measures that were put in place are so severe to keep people from talking about whatever this phenomena is. And that's what Shindeli goes in to talk about in this book. Uh, if you'll remember at the citizen hearing, which I made some videos about, the citizen hearing on disclosure that took place at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., uh, April, early May 2013, David Shindeli was one of the witnesses there amongst the four uh, launch control officers and security guards for these uh, nuclear missile installations. And it was really great to hear his testimony because he had, this was the first time he'd gone forth in public to talk about it. Uh, at this point, the events that happened to him at Minot 
in 66 or 50 years ago. But uh, he didn't really start talking about it until he saw uh, retired Captain Robert Salas, who we've mentioned before, who came, uh, went forward with his own stories about similar events happening at Maelstrom Air Force Base up near Great Falls, Montana, around the same time period, where unexplained glowing objects came over the base and then the missiles went offline mysteriously. Now, Shindeli tells us that it might not, in some cases, he heard, uh, talked to other con launch control officers where the missiles were activated and they actually had to override the missiles. So you can see this is a type of very serious uh, tampering with uh, extremely dangerous weapon systems. And according to Shindeli, there was never any explanation put forward by the Air Force that these could have been Russian, uh, vehicles or black budget secret projects within the United States Air Force or some other branch of the military. It's never been suggested that that was the case. So we really have to conclude that this is some other intelligence that is basically suggesting to us that they don't like our nuclear weaponry and it's a way to make us aware of that. Now if you'll remember I, I put up another video a couple months ago, Gary, who also served at Minot Air Force Base as a uh, one of the strike teams and as a security guard and his job was to go around and investigate alarms that went off at the different missile silos you know there's 10 missile silos per launch control facility and gary had the experience of going to one of these uh, missile silos when an alarm had gone off twice in the same day only to see also his uh guard that was also in the truck with him uh what he described as a very large blindingly bright object take off from the prairie there about 300 yards from the missile silo. And um, it, it was so bright, he was so close to it that both he and his, the other airmen in the truck were burnt on one side of the face that was exposed to the light and the energy from this vehicle. Now, again, this is a very serious situation. Gary, you can watch the video out here. You can see here's the link for it um, above, but uh, it's a very serious situation when, you know, people that are guarding these missiles in charge of launching them, should that ever come to pass, are exposed to these types of phenomena and yet they're instructed never to talk about it. Gary actually signed something, a non-disclosure agreement saying he'd never talk about it again, like many other people that have experienced the same phenomena. So this is a very serious situation. It's something we've never talked about publicly in the United States. It happened to many other northern tier bases, as they're called, that were part of Strategic Air Command in the 60s and 70s. And it could be going on right now, but we wouldn't know about it because the people who've been involved are also probably being told if it is happening, never to talk about it again. So uh, Shindeli is one of, you know, several we, people over the decades who've been in the military who've come forward to tell us about this. I mean, either the military or the intelligence community, we had Admiral Roscoe Hill and Cutter, who was the first director of the Central Intelligence Agency, make very public comments about the seriousness of the situation. Uh, Donald Kehoe came forward and said the same thing after he did his own investigations. And then Al J. Allen Hynek, who worked for Project Blue Book under the Air Force, originally a skeptic of UFOs, after seeing all the evidence, changed his mind and decided that this is a real phenomenon. So here we have another person who's come from the military or intelligence community who's had an experience with the phenomenon, it's telling us it's real and it's something we need to be paying attention to. It's uh, something that shows us ultimately that we live in a universe that we don't fully understand that has other types of intelligence um, in it that's interacting with us, uh, particularly at nuclear missile facilities, storage facilities. It's happened around many other uh, nuclear uh, related uh, installations around the United States over the decades, including nuclear power plants. Remember, there was over the, in the Hudson Valley, there was that sighting over Indian Point in 1984, July, I believe, and 30 security guards saw it. It hovered over one of the cooling uh, domes for the power plant. So uh, this is a recurring theme, UFOs and nuclear uh, power plants, facilities, installations, and it's something that really needs to be addressed at some point. What is exactly going on? I'd like to know too. I'm sure you would also. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll talk to you um, another time. Take care for now. Bye.